Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are doing this series on Islamic ethics and uh, in this series we have covered many different topics uh, on the Islamic etiquettes. Islam has its own ethical code and we have to try and abide by Islamic ethical code. It has its own social uh, ethical code. It has ethics for uh, economics, it has ethics for all the different dimensions of life, business ethics, social ethics, um, ethics for the home, for better. Today we will be talking about helping others. To be helpful, a moment should be a helpful person. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, encourages that people try and help each other. It is a great quality that a person is useful. Even for a scholar, who is useful, who is helpful. Um, and Allah has made us useful. We're all in need of each other. We're all um, uh, like parts of one body. All of these parts of the body help me live my life. If one feels that uh, they are completely self-centered, selfish, and they do not like to know anyone else and they want to be... Uh, uh, they want to use others for their purposes, but they do not wish to help anyone. Then that is a very um, negative quality. So a person should try and be helpful. How can we be helpful? Well, everyone has different qualities and everyone can be helpful. From the most scholarly and learned person to the most um, unlearned and uh, uh, layman, everyone is useful. There is no one useless. So one has to realize that uh, everyone's potential and everyone's ability is different. Everyone's um, usefulness is different. But we have to try and be helpful. How do we help other members at, at work, at school? One, sometimes at school, one child is struggling and they cannot uh, do as well as the others. So the teacher has to try and help. The other students have to try and help rather than being uh, negative and say that this child is holding all of us back. No, it is making us work hard and we have to try and help so the other student can do as well as us. The teacher helps the students to, to go into the next stage. In fact, we have a tradition from Imam al-Baqir al-Islam where he says, a mu'min cannot go into the next stage of Iman until and unless he helps the one in the lower level to come into his position or her position. So if you help others to come into your position, then Allah takes you further. So there is a reward for it. You can help uh, in terms of uh, intellectual help. You can give help uh, economically to the people, people who are struggling financially. You help the poor people, so they should be the, they were sometimes, you know, the countries who were rich the G7, the G8, the G20, the, you know, the richest, greatest countries, they would help the poorer countries to do better. So they would help them to come out of the poverty and go into the next stage. Likewise, the rich people try and help through homes and zakat, you know, the poor rate, through um, sadaqat, khairat, and so many other um, uh, financial helps there are Islamically that the rich people can give to the poor people and so the poor people can come out of the poverty and go into uh, becoming, if not rich, then at least don't be poor. So we can not only just have intellectual help, but we can have financial help and we can have social help. People who are struggling ethically, people who are, God forbid, in drugs or into bad habits, in, we have to try and help them rather than treating them like uh, criminals we should treat them like people who need help, people who need assistance, people who need um, some sort of mechanism in the society to try and bring them out of those social and ethical um, uh, problems. So they have, they have a problem. People who have problem with, uh, who are struggling with uh, forming a family, so you should try and help them form a family. People who are in a family, but they, are, they have anger management problem, they have... Uh, other problems that they are uh, in. So we have to try and help. And the best help can be from uh, family members because you can open up to them and 
we sometimes, even if they don't open up to us, we still know that they're in a problem and we should try and help them. Imam Jafar Sadiq salam was once asked, Mawla, if we know someone is in problem, do we have to help them? The Imam said, yes, that is a quality and that is a uh, sign of a believing person. He said, if they ask us, uh, do we have to help them? Or if they don't even ask for the help and we know that they, ha- they need the help, we should help. He said, if they ask you and you don't help, then you are not even a true believer. But even if they don't ask and you know they have a problem, it is an obligation upon you as a believer to go out and help them. In another tradition, a group of people from Iraq, probably around Kufa, came to Medina to Imam Jafar Sadiq and they said, Mawla, we are all your Shias, we all believe in you. Uh, and he said, can a poor person without asking for the permission of the rich person take his own share in your town? He said, no, Mawla, that does not happen. He said, uh, do the uh, people when they are in problems uh, uh, naturally expect the help of the rich people without uh, any communication? He said, no, that doesn't happen. So he counted a number of uh, actions and he said, do, you, do they have any of these qualities? So the person said, no, we don't have any of those qualities. He said, well, then what kind of Shias are you? you a Shia is a person who allows the poor person to take help with their own accord, without even uh, the rich minding that, well, hang on, this poor person came and took what they needed to eat from my fridge without my permission. That should happen naturally, meaning the community should be so close to each other together that that help is natural. Help is naturally provided to each other. We need help in every dimension. A person was once praying in front of Imam Zainul Abidin and he was saying, Oh Allah, uh, do not make me in need of others. The Imam Islam rectified his dua and said, Don't pray that we don't, I don't want to be in need. We all need each other. Pray to Allah, O oh Allah, do not make me in need of someone who is selfish, someone who is hard-hearted, who does not wish to help. Not that I don't need any help. No, we all need help from each other, but we should be in need of people who are kind, who want to give help. How do we become soft-hearted and we always realize the pain of others? Some people say that if you uh, feel your own pain, then you are alive. But if you feel the pain of others, then you are a human being. So we should always be first to offer help. Rather than waiting for people to come and ask for assistance. If we see a person wandering on the street, you say, can I help? Are you lost? Um, the Holy Prophet ﷺ, whenever he was passing in the street and he saw someone uh, in uh, distress, um, he would go forward and ask. He saw um, a, a, a girl in the street who was crying and he went and asked her. He said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She said, I... Uh, I'm a servant in someone's house and I have, they gave me some money to buy something and I lost some money. He said, how much was it? He, she said, it was two silver coins. So he quickly gave her the two silver coins. He said, go and buy and, and go home. You see, uh, assisting other people in their needs is a quality of a believing person. The Muslims in Medina were raised so much so by the Holy Prophet ethically that... Um, when people came from other towns, they did not believe what the society had, well, you know, the Muslim society had become, how the Holy Prophet ﷺ had changed everyone. So we have to try in a masjid, when we meet each other, we say, do you need any sort of help? You know, just make a, make a good habit of, of saying to each other, can I help you in any way? Uh, you know, when you meet uh, people at the masjid. Uh, and do that with a smiling face. Do that with a face that people feel that, yes, he means it. He means it in a, in a good way. Uh, not, don't make a face and do you need any help? You know, make it in a way that, you know, can, can I help in any way? Especially people who are going through problems. You know that a person, uh, that there's been a death in a family, you quickly go and offer your help. Uh, do you need any help with the funeral? Do you need any help with the 
uh, burial? Do you need any help after they have passed away? Do, you know, does the family now have lost their breadwinner? Do they need any help and assistance at home? Imam Ali Islam said, in my uh, government, no one ever feels that they have now lost their loved ones and they will be left to deal with the whole problem by themselves. So all sorts of help uh, in society is, is needed. And in every way, especially the elderly in our society struggle. Especially in the Western world, uh, the elderly are expected to go to the homes, uh, the old home, and they are not provided with any assistance. Um, I urge our younger people to go and ask the elderly, even if they are not related to you, uh, but if they are related to you, it's an obligation. If they are not related to you, then even then it is an obligation upon us to go and seek the elderly to ask them if they need any sort of help. Sometimes just, you know, doing some little shopping. Sometimes just, you know, uh, with some cooking, with some washing. And little things like that can change the whole society. Um, in our society, many times there are people who need help you know, younger people need help with sometimes homework, with, with uh, careers, advice on career, what sort of career they should be taking up. So we should not expect them to come and ask, well, no one asked me. Well, I should ask and say, what can I do for you? Um, and make the, uh, the offer to anyone who needs it. When the offer is open, uh, people may say, yes, I do need help. But if we don't offer, we sometimes are hurting the pride of every person. They do not wish to put themselves down where they seem to be asking. We should be, uh, we should be offering rather than expecting others to ask. Offering, uh, saying that if you need any assistance, that I'm here. In the final part, I would like to say that Many a times it can be the moral support you're giving to the others. They sometimes only need some moral support. They need someone to talk to. They need, someone to, they need someone's shoulder to cry upon. I have seen many times people don't need any help. All they need is someone to just guide them and, and listen to the problem they have. And you just give your professional advice. And if you cannot, you guide them to the right people who can give them the professional help. These people need. So it is... Many times just moral support that the people need and not uh, the financial and the social support that we think they need. Please be helpful to everyone and Allah will help you. You hold someone's hand and take them forward two steps, Allah will take you forward 20 steps. Thank you for listening. Fiyamanillah.